Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Walk Podcast. I hope that you're all doing well. If you are new here, my name is Sam, and we are on episode 11, guys. Took a little bit of a break from the podcast, did some traveling, did the whole Thanksgiving thing, but we are back, and today we're going to chit-chat, we're going to hang out, and the main focus of this video, or this episode, rather, is the idea of loneliness and what what it feels like, what comes with it, and the difference between being alone and feeling lonely. So we're going to get into all that. That's the meat potatoes of this video. But how are you guys doing? I hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving for those of you that celebrate. Um, I am filming this on the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Um, so it's been a nice four-day weekend from work. It was a nice break, a nice reset to just be with family and, and loved ones and eating good food. And I, <laughs> I'm wearing a dress today on purpose. It's not to look cute. It's simply because I am not prepared to put on jeans right now. So you, you get it. Um, if you know, you know. Um, but it was a great, it was a great time. I, um, for those of you who... Uh, have been following me for a while, you probably know. My parents are divorced, so I usually kind of split the day in half, so I'll usually do like the first half of the day at dad's, and then around like 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I transition to mom's, and um, it was really nice just to be to be home, to be in, in my old house, and, and we had my cousins, and my step-siblings, and my aunts and you know just the whole family just to be together under one roof to hear the house filled with laughter to you know smell the good the aromas of the food you know um and to just be together in our own crazy chaotic loving way so it was very nice and then Friday I actually stayed at my mom's house from Thursday all the way to Saturday morning and um, I was able to just stay home and I went and visited an uncle that lives nearby and I helped my mom decorate her house for Christmas just the way I used to when I lived there and it was just, it was very like a making your inner child very happy kind of weekend. So super thankful for it. I have so much to be thankful for and I love the fact that Thanksgiving kind of like makes you reflect on that like yes it's about family time yes it's about the good food of course but it also I think is important to like stop and think about like what you are really thankful for um I am just I mean I'm thankful for a lot of things and that's not what this video is about so I'm not going to go down my list of things that I'm grateful for but I just think back to this time last year and I was in such a different place I was very unhappy and I, one, I feel like I looked like a completely different person, but also not just because my hair color was different or this, that, and the other thing. It was more of just like there was a cloud over me. Like, I don't want to say a cloud of darkness because it wasn't like evil per se, but it, I just was not in a good place. Like, I think back to Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's of last year, and there was so much going on and so many things that I didn't share with anyone about what I was going through and the things that were bothering me and the insecurities I had and the anxiety I had that I didn't even realize was fully there until later on and just to to compare that to where I am now I'm just so thankful I feel like a completely different person I was sitting with my mom I think it was Saturday or maybe it was Friday and a Snapchat memory came up of me and one of my best friends at a bar last year for Thanksgiving Eve. Again, I was blonde. I just looked different. There was just something about me that was different. And it's hard to like pinpoint what it was. And, you know, I just said, look, I showed my mom. I said, who, like, who is this person? And she was like, it's you. But you were just, you were, you were, you weren't happy, you know? And I was like, yeah, I was. And so I'm just so thankful that... You know, this year I have been molded. I've learned how to be a better friend, a better daughter, a better sister, a better cousin, a better friend. Um, I might have said that twice, but you get it. Like, I just, I just am, I'm just so thankful for where I am right now. Um, That was a tangent. Didn't mean to go down that rabbit hole, but um, 
yeah so i hope that you all enjoyed your little thanksgiving and you are getting ready for the holidays my you can't see it but my my tree is up you can see this pillow is new i didn't realize i'm kind of channeling christmas right now with the the red and the green and the white christmas slash maybe the italian flag i don't know i wasn't going for that vibe but anyway um this is just <laughs> what i wore to church today and i didn't change so anyway um what else did I want to talk to you guys about in the opening? Um, things have been going really well. I'm not going to go too much into this, but I do have like a little kind of testimony that I wanted to share in the beginning. Um, I'm not going to go into it too much just because it is personal to someone other than myself. But um, basically one of my best friends, you know, she and I went out to dinner a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know if you're watching this, you know who you are. If you don't yet, you're going to know. Uh, in a few seconds, but um, you know, I could just tell that she's she's been going through a lot, and I could tell that she was she was searching, and she she needed she needed something something to comfort her comfort her beyond how I could comfort her, and so you know, I was just talking to her, and and I gave her an open invitation, and I said, you know, I am not pressuring you in any way, but if you ever feel like you want to come to church with me it is an open door always. You just tell me. I said, this is the one and only time, well, not the only time. I said, this is the one time, your one big invitation that I'm going to tell you whenever you feel like you want to, if you ever want to, the door is open and you can come to church with me. And she surprised me by saying, you know, she's like, yeah, let's like, let's look at the calendar right now and pick a day. And I was like, well, okay, cool. And she, you know, she basically just said, she's like, I, I see that you're experiencing something and I don't fully know what it is. I don't understand it. You know, she's never really been to like a, she's never been to a Christian church. She doesn't, you know, she's just not familiar with that at all. And um, she said, I, I don't really know what you're experiencing. I don't really understand it, but like, I know that I want it. And, and so I want to come. And she was so excited about it. And it like blew my mind and I'm sitting there and I didn't tell her this, but like I got in my car after dinner and I was just by myself and I just started crying. I was on the phone with my mom. And I just started crying because I was like, this is what, I have been praying for, I've been praying for her to just, to, to just, to, I was just praying for a, an open door for her to kind of come in and, and come to church with me and just be able to talk to her about the way that my life has been changed. Anyway, so, but I was still, we, we picked a day, but I was still kind of like, oh, I don't know, like, I feel like she's gonna, she's gonna say, oh, you know, never mind, or I can't make it, or you know, when something is new and it's scary, we've all been there where you're actually like, eh, actually, I can't make it. Like, I've I've invited other friends before and they've, like, canceled, you know? So I was just, like, waiting for it. But then I was like, no, 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 I'm going to pray. And so I prayed for her, like, every morning and I would pray like, that God kept that excitement in her heart. And then I texted her that during this week and I said, hey, like, you know, are you still coming? And she said, yes, like, I've been thinking about it, honestly, so much. <sighs> Blew my mind. And then today... She went to church and I could tell she was very skeptical in the beginning, but I saw that I saw the exact moment. Like I was trying to give her her space, you know, because it's a very personal time, but I could see from the corner of my eye, like the moment that the message touched her and she started to cry. And then she essentially kind of accepted the Lord into her life, which phew, I cried. Um, and, you know, like during, if you've ever been to like church during the salvation call, when they do that at the end of the service and every eye is closed, you're supposed to bow your head, close your eyes so that everybody has privacy. I couldn't help it. I like peeked a little bit just to see. And I saw her hand go up and I was like, ah. Um, and then, you know, I introduced her to some people after church and, uh, you know, they prayed with her and she came out to lunch with me and my new friends, which I have friends, guys. We'll get into that. Um, so it's just, uh, just a lot of answered prayers and I feel really happy. So I just wanted to share that um, because... Uh, this is one of my best friends from elementary school. She's very important to me. And so it just, my heart is, my heart is happy. But anyway, today's episode, we are going to talk about, like I said, the idea of being alone versus feeling lonely because they are two very different things. I have experienced both firsthand, so I get it. And so I feel like I'm at a place where I can talk about both. In this episode, the topic was actually requested. I forget by who because it was a while ago. I wrote it down on my list of like podcast ideas that I have in my phone. So if that was you, you know who you are. But it was essentially a comment from um, a young woman who 
was kind of like asking, you know, you, you went from being in a relationship to, to now being single and you also live alone. So how are you dealing with loneliness? Do you feel lonely? You know, how are you coping with it? I would love to hear a podcast episode about that. So that's what we're doing. Um, and of course, like I, I read all the comments. So if you ever have a topic like that that you want us to talk about, I would love to hear it. So don't ever hesitate to leave me a comment or a DM. Um, so yeah, as you guys know, I mean, I have lived alone since July of last year. Um, but when I moved here, I always lived by myself, but I was in a relationship. And so um, essentially, like pretty much every weekend and, and maybe once during the week, like my ex and I would essentially like play house, you know, like he would either sleep here or I would sleep at his place or whatever. So um, for the first month that's math the first seven months of me living here um like every weekend like I was pretty much never alone on the weekends um sleeping wise and so it, I went from that to then being single and and you know always basically being alone in this apartment for the most part unless I you know have people over or whatever but even that especially back then at that time in my life was rare um and it was just kind of it was just me in this in this apartment so I absolutely felt feelings of loneliness. Um, I, when my breakup first happened, I felt so alone because you constantly have that person to talk to. You constantly, like whether you're texting throughout the day or you FaceTime every night or they're sleeping over, or you're sleeping, whatever. It's a big change to go from that to then just nothing, you know? And I felt very lonely and my mom, my mom was so clutch. She, at the time, she would talk to me every day on the phone. She would call me on my way home from work just so I felt like I had someone to come to talk to after work, someone to know like when I made it home safely. Um, and she, even though she had to be up early for work and I work late, I get home at 11, 11, 15 at night. So she's usually like asleep by then, but she, for the first couple of, months maybe the first like two months like she stayed up every night just to give me someone to talk to it's just I will never forget that um and you know she would text me just you know I, I needed that because I felt so alone I was very I was really really uncomfortable with being alone I didn't like being here if it was like a Friday night and I had no plans I was like in the beginning I was horrified I will never forget, it was like two weeks after the breakup and it was a Saturday and I had plans with my college friends at night, like that evening until like, se like the plans were at like 7 p.m. But for the first part of the day, I didn't have any plans and I was by myself and I sat here, I was sitting right here and I was FaceTiming my mom because she called me and she was like, okay, so you're meeting up with your friends tonight? And I was like, yeah, you know, and she could see that my face started to like turn emotional. And she was like, you're a little sad right now. And I remember I just like started bawling because I just felt so I wasn't used to being by myself. It was awful. It was, oh, I like, I, I, it makes me even like almost a little emotional now because I remember so exactly what it felt like. Um, and it was just, oh, it was an awful, awful, awful feeling. And again, it's because I moved in here already in a relationship. So I didn't know what it was like to truly be alone. Does that make sense? Even though I know I lived alone, but I never felt truly on my own because I had someone. So it was a really, really, really big adjustment. Um, and I have come such a long way to where I am now and I have learned so much about like how good it actually is to have a season of just being you just being by yourself pouring into yourself choosing yourself learning about yourself it, it's been one of the best things ever I've been single for 10 months now 11 something like that 10 months um and man I have learned so much about myself I it's just, it's great. So I, I want to encourage you that if you're feeling alone, if you're feeling that loneliness, one, it gets better. And two, I'm going to give you some things to think about so that you actually realize that it's not a bad thing. Yes, it is an adjustment. 
but it's not a bad thing and I truly don't believe that it is forever no matter what your situation is if you're feeling lonely right now I don't I really don't believe that it is forever it is just a season there is a season for everything I think it's somewhere in the book of Ephesians if we're if we want to go that route it says that there's a season for everything but the seasons are temporary so okay so I realize I have done so much for self-reflection in 2023 between just like my alone time and like the therapy I did for nine, 10 months. I think it's like nine. I have done so much self-reflection <laughs> about why do I think this way and what caused it and, and how can I not think that way and blah, 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 about like every aspect of my life. And I realized that even going back from when I was like young, young, my mood, my demeanor, my just my feelings were always equated to how others felt about me or like what my other relationships in my life were, whether it was platonic, like friendship wise or romantically, my mood depended a lot on that. I remember when there were times where I liked somebody and they gave me attention that day. I was, oh, I was in the best mood. I was spunky. I was happy. I was laughing. I was all the things. And then days when maybe they wouldn't give me the attention you would have thought that somebody ran over my dog like my mood and my feelings were always tied to my relationships with other people and the way that people or the way I thought that people perceived me and I'm, I'm looking down just because I have a couple of notes that I wrote down <clears throat> um so anyway so I I learned that and I had to untrain myself to not think that way because it's it's really not healthy again that goes into like finding your identity in other people rather than just knowing who you are as a whole person and I truly think that it is the best way to one learn about yourself to learn about self-love is to truly walk by yourself maybe you don't necessarily have to be like alone, like maybe you have a roommate. That's not what I'm saying. But like to truly, truly like be standing on your own as far as like your relationships. I hope that makes sense. Um, I have learned so much about what I like, what I don't like, what I like to do in my spare time, what's fun for me and what's not. And the more you sit in those things and really dive into things that make you happy and then also not do the things that don't make you happy you become set in your ways and sometimes getting set in your ways I think it can can be a bad thing because you know it can stop you from being kind of flexible and open-minded but at the same time when it comes to like setting boundaries for yourself for your future friendships or your future relationship or whatever it is you're getting set in your ways so that nobody can move those boundaries Um, so I have learned so many things just being by myself that I know will carry into whatever relationship comes next or, you know, what maybe my, my friends want to do. If I don't want to do that, it's okay to just, to just say no, you know, you, you have, you have those boundaries. And I truly think that when you feel that loneliness, cause yes, I'm alone. I'm alone right now. It's five 39 p.m. I'm going to be alone until tomorrow like I'm not I don't have any plans to leave my apartment for the rest of the day nobody's coming over so I'm technically going to be alone for the rest of the night but I don't feel lonely I really think that when you feel that loneliness at least in my experience it was because I felt a void I felt like something was missing I felt like I didn't I wasn't a whole person and it was because I didn't know who I was I didn't know what my who who I was without a relationship I didn't know who I was without male attention I didn't know who I was and so that's why I felt so lonely and that's why people find things find other people find other ways to compensate for filling that void that you feel and as hard as it seems one of the best ways to heal that is to be alone longer you have to get to the point where you are okay with being alone. And the only way you're going to get there, yeah, is to is to practice it. It's like a muscle. Y- a muscle is not going to grow unless you use it and you work it. And so this is, this is a similar concept where you're going to have to 
be alone in order to become more comfortable with it. Um, and you're never going to do that if you're just searching for things to fill that void, whether it's people, whether it's an activity that may not be that good for you, but you're doing it because it, it distracts you from your loneliness, whatever that may be. It's different for every person. Um, but it's really just, it's just filling, it's just filling a void and it's not the healthiest way to go about it. I would say one thing that will help though, that helped me at least is like, having a routine to stick to because I was so focused on just my routine of like okay when I would when I would work out in the mornings when I would eat when I would do my bible time like just following that routine I don't know it's just something about this is a me thing structure like like satisfies me it's like oddly satisfying so having and developing a routine was really good for me um, and finding things that you enjoy, whether it's going to a workout class, like that's not something I enjoy, but maybe you enjoy that. I like to just work out on my treadmill at home in the comfort of my home, but like maybe you like that. Maybe it's going to get a Starbucks drink and walking around Target for 30 minutes, whatever it is. Find things that you enjoy because it's that, that satisfies you. And that kind of satisfaction lasts. I'm not saying Target is... A healthy satisfaction but you know what I mean like finding things that you enjoy that's something that will stay with you and that doesn't just temporarily fill a void it it fills the void permanently because you're becoming a whole person you're finding your interests you're finding your rhythm finding things that you enjoy and then once you're once you're there and you're satisfied then other people can come in and we'll get we'll get to that but um, those are just some things that, that helped me. And again, like I said, it is a muscle. You have to, you have to exercise it. Um, but you're true, like, it's really just about being content. And if you're not fully content with who you are as in your individual self, by yourself, who you are when nobody's around, when nobody can see you, that's why you fill that void. So it's really just about, healing in here and for example if you want to compare like then and now last year like I said or not 10 months ago whatever I if I was alone for a day or like if it was a Saturday and I had no plans oh I would cry I would be depressed I would be like I would oh it would just I would not be in a good headspace whereas I think it was last weekend last Saturday I had just gotten back and back from Seattle that week so I was tired but I had no plans that Saturday and I didn't make any plans and honestly no one reached out to me about plans and I didn't reach out to anybody about plans it was just like I was just like okay I'm not gonna have plans that day that's fine but I was excited about it I remember sitting at work Friday and I was like oh I'm so excited to be able to do whatever I want tomorrow 10 months ago that would have been my worst nightmare and maybe to some of you you're listening to this and you're like that's my worst nightmare. Like I could never just spend a day by myself with no plans, no one to talk to. But I found I have things that make me happy. So what did I do that day? I slept in that day. I woke up. I had my quiet time with the Lord. I, what did I do? I went to Target to look at like Christmas decor. Who doesn't love that? I cleaned my apartment, which that doesn't make me feel joy necessarily, but I feel joy when it's done. Um, I came home and I filmed a video, which I love making YouTube videos. It's a passion of mine. Um, and then I edited it. I was also making, I was vlogging for a Patreon video throughout the day. Um, and then I ended the night after all the editing was done, all the videos were done. I ended the night with like dinner and watching a movie. And it was, I was truly like so, so satisfied. And through this, these last like 10 months, 11 months, I keep saying different, different months, 9, 10, 11, I lose track of time. But the la all of 2023, basically, to get to this point, it wasn't always easy. It wasn't like just one day a, a switch flipped and all of a sudden I wasn't lonely anymore. I had to like do the work and I, and I have to, I have to take it here because if you really want to know how I got through it, this is how I got through it. I would pray and I would be full on open with him and I would say, Lord, I have no plans today. I'm a little sad about it. I'm a little lonely. 
you know, I would be walking around, let's just say, for example, walking around Target and I would see couples walking around or I would hear about, you know, so and so this girl got together with her girlfriends and like got Starbucks and ran errands and did those just mundane things together or had a movie night with their friends and, you know, and you, you see it on Instagram, you see all the people doing all the fun things and I would, I would pray out loud and I would say, Lord, I'm really sad about it today. And I would pray and I would ask him, since I have nothing else, I would ask him to fill that void. And he did. Every time. I would say, fill me with joy. Fill me with peace. Peace that can only come from you. Because it's not going to come from anywhere else. I'm completely alone today. And I would ask him to fill that void. And he would. Every single time. To the point, and the more, again, the more I exercised that muscle, it got to a point where... Now, the last weekend, I had a day completely to myself and I was so, ex- I was like excited about it. So if you ask him for whatever you need, whether it's loneliness, whether it's depression, anxiety, whatever it is, if you ask him, he's sitting there waiting for you with open arms to invite him into your life and to ask him for help. He's there, but you need to invite him in. And every time I did, he filled that void every single time. If you hit rewind and you go back to 2021, 2022, many of you know, you a lot of you witnessed the relationship I was in. A lot of you witnessed like all the good things I had going in my life. And I truly was like, I am living my best life. This is all I've ever wanted. Like I'm going to get engaged eventually and I'm going to do this and that and all oh, everything's shaping up. And I was living my life idolizing the things in my life I didn't realize it when something consumes you so much to the point where you think about it more than anything you think about it more than yourself and your well-being you think about it more than your relationship with God you know that is that becomes an idol something that you think about all the time it just consumes you I was idolizing things and I didn't know and God was taking things away from me my relationship certain friendships that I was forming. He was taking them away and he did it. I know now he did it to show me that all I needed was him. I was overlooking him because in my mind, according to my own plan, everything else in my life was more important than him. And he was like, no, no, sweetie. I'm going to show you, I'm going to take all these things because this is not the best I have for you. And you're going to sit, you're going to sit alone. And I want to, he's, people say all the time, you may have heard it, like God is a jealous God, meaning he, and that sounds bad, but by that, it means that he wants your, he wants your undivided attention. He wants you. And the only way that I was able to fully connect with him and, and enter into the relationship that I have with him now is if I was alone. It wouldn't have happened if I was in a relationship. It wouldn't have happened if I kept going down the road that I was going. He took all those things away. He brought me into a season of loneliness. He brought me into a season of transition to to bring me closer to him, to show me that I needed to rely on him and him only. No other, a man can't complete me. My friendships can't complete me. A job can't complete me. Only he can. He brought me into this season to make me into who he has called me to be. He needed my undivided attention and I couldn't give him those things when my life was consumed with all these other things that weren't even good for me. So he took me, he molded me, he did, he put me in a season of isolation doesn't mean that I never saw anybody. I still have friends. I still do things. But in comparison to what my life looked like a year ago or two years ago, my life really, really slowed down, which honestly has been very nice. (laughs) But he took me and he was like, okay, I'm going to put you in this season of isolation. I'm going to work on you. Our relationship is going to be stronger. And then I'm going to put you in this season of transition so that you can transition into the next chapter of your life. And that's where I am right now. I did the season of isolation. I did it. Sometimes I'm still there a little bit, but not as bad. Again, we'll get into that. And now I'm in the season of transition. But I couldn't have gotten 
to this season of transition without the season of loneliness. So that's why I want to encourage you that loneliness is not always a bad thing, but you have to differentiate it between do I feel lonely or am I just alone? And you want to be at the alone part and really kind of take advantage of it. Take advantage of the fact that there's no one else distracting you from becoming the best version of yourself. This is your this is your season where maybe you're not in a relationship so you're saving money, right? You're not going on date nights, you're not buying gifts for your partner, you're not going on vacations with your partner, you're saving money. You're not going out, you know, with your friends as much anymore because you're in this season of isolation so you're saving money. You're you're, you know, you have this this time to really become the best version of yourself where you don't have to answer to anybody, you don't need to consult anybody about anything. It really, for me, it became my season of like, okay, what don't I like about my life? I want to change it. So I would do little things, little things here and there. Braces. Um, Another thing that I'm kind of planning that I'm not telling you about yet. Um, But, you know, just I noticed that there were things that I was putting on hold in relation to like another person. Like I always said, oh, I'd like to get braces, you know, like for like my for my wedding you know, the, 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 for the duration of my engagement, I'd like to straighten my teeth so that they're straight for the wedding. Why do I have to wait for a wedding? Why do I have to wait for a man? Get braces. And so I did, you know, things like that. Um, and again, like I said a million times before, learning what you like and what you don't like, it's just, this is a, an amazing season for you to take advantage of. I feel like our society has almost like looks at singleness, like it's a disease, like it's a bad thing. It's not. It's not. And I truly, I've talked about this before. I know that this single season is not forever. God knows the desires of my heart. He knows I desire to be a wife and to have kids. So I know that it's not forever. But it has been, singleness has been such a blessing. And we're not really just talking about singleness as a whole. We're just talking about, you know, feeling lonely. Um, But singleness, you know, plays a part in that. So that's why I keep saying singleness. Um... It is just, it's, oh, it's, if I could just encourage you to just, if it's, if it feels really hard right now, it's going to get better. And please just take, just take advantage of it. And so I have a couple of scriptures that I want to share with you guys. I think only like three, two or three. Um, But, you know, I remember when I started this podcast, I, when we were in the first couple episodes, like around three, four, five episodes in, I'd be like, okay, I don't want to talk about God in every single one because, you know, you know, some people won't like that. And like, yes, that's true. However, if if something like this, especially if someone's asking me, like, how did you get through it? I can't answer that without talking about God, without talking about my faith, because I couldn't have done it without it. It wasn't time that made my loneliness easier. It wasn't time that healed my wounds. It was God. That's just the straight up, that's the straight up truth. So, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with that mentality now. I'm like, you know what, if people want to hear about how I got through X, Y, Z, and if my faith is attached to that, which it usually is, then I'm going to talk about it. So, uh, yes. So the first scripture I wanted to share with you, and I'm just going to read them real quick. We're not going to really stay on them too long. The first one is Isaiah 41, 10. And these are scriptures dealing with loneliness to show you that even when you're alone, you're not really alone. Like for me, that was my prayer all the time where I was like, God, I know that I'm alone, but please show me that you're here with me. So I may be alone from everybody physically, but I know that you're here with me. I know your presence is here. So I'm not really alone. And I would ask him for that and it would bring me comfort. So this one is Isaiah 41, 10. It says, don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And there are some other translations that say, you know, I go before you and I hold and I hold your right hand, like something like a little more simple. And I remember when I was younger and I was going through anxiety with my new job, I would I would read this scripture and I would it sounds stupid, but I'm going to say it anyway. I would imagine him in my head walking next to me, walking into my work building, holding my hand. I don't know. It works. Okay. It works. So that's a good one. The next one is Philippians 
uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus. So that's what I would try to do. I would be honest with him and I would tell him what I need. Give me comfort. Give me peace. Fill this void. And he would every time. Um, and, you know, and I, I would ask for, I would ask for this peace that, that doesn't make sense. And, and you hear that a lot in like the Christian world. And that really just means that when everything around you seems to be going wrong and it would be only natural that you would be sad to be alone all day. And, you know, especially coming out of a breakup that makes it even harder. So it wouldn't make sense that I would feel this peace and joy. But once I asked for it, I would feel that peace and joy. So that's kind of what that means. Um, and, you know, if you read the word, like I've been really into the to the word in the last couple of months, and I haven't read the whole Bible, not yet, um, but I have read so much and I have learned so much. And you can really just see in the Bible that, like, God is for us. He is rooting for us. He wants us to be happy. He doesn't like when we're unhappy. The Bible says in multiple places, he is for us. He wants the best for us. He takes delight in our lives. He takes delight in when we're happy. Um, and I have learned that he uses everything for good. All the pain and loneliness that I felt is what fuels this podcast. Literally, everything I went through this year is what fuels this podcast. And I've gotten message that messages that it's helping people. And it's just it's just such an example of how he takes bad and turns it for good. And everything is so intentional. Uh, Psalm 23, 6 is actually my new favorite Bible verse, one of them. Um, and it says, Surely your goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And that means so the, it's really just the main, the first part that really speaks to me. Surely your goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. Meaning he wants to be with you every day, all the time. And he will consistently run after you. Um, a really good song actually that is based on that verse is Runnin' by Brandon Lake. If you search, if you just search Runnin' by Brandon, Brandon Lake and Elevation Worship, it'll come up. It's such a good song. And it's just about how God just pursues us all the time. He always, he will never stop chasing us. So even when people in the world don't choose you, you get broken up with or your friends don't invite you out anymore or you've outgrown a lot of your friendships and, and you just feel like nobody is choosing you, but he chooses you every time. And that's something that I had to learn. So even though I, f I was alone, I didn't feel lonely. Psalm 34, 18 and 19. Okay, I guess I had more than three verses. But anyway, this one says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. This was, this was my lock screen for most of the beginning part of 2023 when I was like really, really hurting and I was down bad. This was my lock screen. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed with me the righteous person forces i'm sorry the righteous person faces many troubles but the lord comes to the rescue every time so when you're down bad he's there with you whether you know it or not he's sitting right next to you but it's when you invite him in and you ask him for help and you tell him what you need that's when the comfort comes and yeah, I'm just going to leave it. I could that could be a whole other like episode in and of itself, but he will help you every time. I promise. And in if you've never prayed, like I'm like I'm talking to you like you're of Christian faith and you go to church regularly and you have a relationship with God, but maybe you don't. And that's totally okay here. You're more than welcome here anyway. I love that there are people of many different religions watching these podcast videos. Um but maybe you've never prayed and you're like, like I had a friend who we were talking about prayer and she was like, how do you pray? Like, what do you say? What do you talk about? How do you like, she's like, I always feel like I need, it needs to be this fancy, proper, like memorized prayer. And I'm like, no, I don't pray like that. Like when I have to go to like, not to like take a morbid turn, but like when I have to go to a funeral, for example, and it's held in a Christian, um, a Catholic church, like I go and I think it's beautiful, but like the memorized prayers, I don't know them. And I actually feel like uncomfortable. I just sit there and I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say because I, my, our prayers, at least for the Christian faith, are not memorized. They're not recited. They're not, you know, for me, 
And for most Christians, just to kind of put it into perspective, it's like sitting down and talking to a friend. Like I just, I literally sit right where I'm sitting now and I look out the window every morning or I close my eyes and I just talk to him as if he was a friend sitting in front of me. I tell him what I need, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking. I don't use big words. I have straight up sometimes like when I, when I notice things in my life that I'm like, nah, I think that's God. I literally look at him and I'm like, what you doing? Like I talk to him like he's my friend (laughs) and that's what he wants. He wants you to just talk to him. He wants you to invite him in. So if you are thinking about praying about this stuff and you don't even know where to start, just sit down by yourself, turn off the TV or mute it, you know, no distractions and just be like, Hey God, you can even just say like, I've never really done this before. Um, and I don't really know what to say, but like, I'm feeling really anxious right now, or I'm feeling really lonely and I don't know what to do about it. And I don't have anybody to turn to. Um, but I'd really like to feel peace. You know, if you would just help me, that's all you have to say. He, he, it, I feel like people just complicate religion and prayer. It doesn't have to be that complicated. It's actually very simple. (laughs) Um, so just try it. Just try it. You have nothing to lose, right? Just try it. Um, But it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Now, the last thing I want to say, like the the last main topic is, and this is, I've learned this from personal experience. Feeling that loneliness is okay. It's actually healthy to really sit in that loneliness. Acknowledge the fact that you feel lonely and then teach yourself how to be okay with it. And that's everything that we've talked about so far that feeling that loneliness is okay. But at a certain point, I personally believe, and this is mostly like if you're craving, like if you're feeling lonely and you're craving people, which is I found myself in that situation. Once you've felt the loneliness and you feel confident in who you are as a person and you're like, you just feel more whole, like that's the best way I can think to explain it. Ooh, this is weird. I'm like saying, I'm speak. that's weird. I've never experienced that before. I'm talking to you about all the things I wanted to talk about and I'm feeling like doubt in my head just now. I was, I literally just got the feeling or like the thought of what you're saying is stupid and it like discouraged me. But we got no place for that here in Jesus name. That's see, that's like, that happens where the devil will try to come in and try to like just fill you with doubt when you're trying to do a good thing and you know we're rebuking that in in jesus name um that was wild that's never happened to me like actually on camera before that was weird i hope you're getting something out of this um i pray that you are but anyway um like i was saying loneliness is good but i think at a certain point we get to the point where you have to get up and now go find community again and it is hard i am not gonna sit here and tell you that it's easy okay I have been going to this new church since July and it is not until now at the end of November that I am starting to actually make friends, friends that I'm going out to eat with, friends that I, you know, have on like social media or we've exchanged numbers. It took me that long. Okay. And I'm still not even fully there. Like I'm making friends, but they don't, we don't know each other that well yet. I don't know their story. They don't know mine. Um, but there's, you know, there's still friends that I'm, I'm building community with, um, which, oh, it makes my heart so happy because I have been praying for this for months and months and months about just having godly community in my life. Um, again, I haven't really had that since I was in high school, honestly, where people are on the same level as me and that are on fire for God and that we, you know, can pray together. Like we went out, I went out to, to lunch with a group of people after church today are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. And we sat there and we all held hands and prayed over the food together before we ate. I can't even tell you the last time that I have had that. And it just makes my heart so happy (laughs) Um, because this has been a long time coming. And I don't even think the people that I was with, like, I don't even think they know that they were like an answer. They are an answer to my prayers. Like I was sitting in an answered prayer today and last week we went out for lunch after church too and it just like oh and I even just looked down just now and one of them sent me a picture that she just decorated her Christmas tree like in her apartment just like uh you know and it's again it's easier said than done it was so hard to get to this point and again I'm not even fully there yet I'm not even fully there yet these are like 
surface level friendships still, but you have to start somewhere, right? But I had to go into a place where I knew no one. It was very uncomfortable at times. It felt weird. I felt awkward. You start to get that doubt in your head of like, eh, and then they're gonna they're gonna think I'm weird or they're not gonna like me or whatever. These you know these normal human feelings that we feel. Um, and it was hard. But the only way to go through and experience growth is to be uncomfortable. I have learned that that's like one of the biggest things I probably learned this year is that if you're not uncomfortable, you're probably not doing it right. But it's so worth it, guys. I can tell you I have been through it. I have been through every step of this from feeling devastatingly lonely to then feeling kind of okay to then being like, okay, I feel really good now. Now I need people. I need people in my life. I need new community in my life. I have gone through every step of the way and it's worth it. Just stick with it. Again, it took me how many months from July to now and it was worth it. Get involved. Say yes to everything. Smile at everybody. Say hi to everybody. You know how many times I have said in the past couple months, oh, I'm Sam, by the way. (laughs) I haven't introduced myself to that many people ever in my life. It's so worth it. Maybe for you, that's not a church. Maybe, again, it's a workout class. It's a, I don't know, a photography class. It's volunteering at an animal shelter. It's, you know, whatever. And if as long as you go in and you act like you know that God put you there, that he is placing your steps and you just go in and you just be yourself, people, the right people, because not everyone's going to gravitate towards you, but the right people will. And that's how you form friendships. And you have to stick with it. Friendships are not built overnight. They're like little babies. Like they just have to be relationships, friendships. They have to be nurtured. They have to be built. It's just like dating. When you, you first meet somebody, you first start dating and you're in that like awkward phase where you're still getting to know each other and blah, blah, blah. You're never going to get to that point of like, oh, I'm dating my best friend unless you go through all that, you know? So you really have to just nurture those those relationships and feed into them and be like, yeah, I'd love to go get lunch with you or um, whatever, whatever. Um, and don't be like me where for, for a really long time, I waited for people to initiate. I, I waited for someone to invite me to lunch. Whereas I'm, I'm learning like now currently in this season that I'm in right now, like, Hey, you want to go get a grab, you grab a bite to eat after church? Maybe don't say it like that and stumble over your words. But, you know, hey, do you want to go grab lunch? Do you want to go do whatever? And the worst they can say is no. They say, no, okay, you move on. You feel the sting for a little bit. You're not going to feel that sting forever. But it's worth it. And, um, you know, it just don't sit in that loneliness forever. Because once you sit there, the longer you sit there, you get too comfortable. I do think that that's a thing. You have to get comfortable in your in your alone time, but I do think there is a difference or there is such a thing as being too comfortable because then you're not going to want to go out. Then you're not going to want to meet people because you just, you're so set in your routine. So I always told myself, even through the loneliness, that it wasn't forever so that I knew that. I was like mentally preparing myself for the fact that, okay, this is just temp- the temporary. This is my like season that I'm in now. It's not going to last forever. Um, I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to miss anything. I was writing this last night when I was, um, when I was out actually, but these ideas just like kept coming to me and I didn't want to like forget anything. So I just have to write it down. Um, so yeah, I said, if you're not happy, you know, do something about it and you have to, I wrote down, you have to leave the past in the past. Um, so that's more of like, if you're coming out of a bad friendship or a bad relationship, don't live in the past because that's going to make your loneliness feel worse. Don't reread old text messages. Don't look at old pictures. I, when my relationship ended, I'm not even like being dramatic. As soon as he walked out the door, (laughs) I erased everything. Text chain, gone. My social media posts, gone. Uh, Unfriended him on everything so that I couldn't look. The next morning, I went through my entire 
camera roll and my entire Snapchat memory all the way back to 20... 15 or whatever it was and I deleted everything that he was in because we were friends for a very long time That's why I had to go all the way back to 2015, but I had to do that to not allow myself to live in the past I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to look at it I didn't want to let myself dwell there and honestly for someone in such a low place that I was in at that time That was actually really smart of me. I don't know what possessed me to do that But I was like, yep, it's got to go and my mom was here and she even she was like here with a garbage bag and she was like, let's throw some things out. And I was like, okay. And not in a spiteful way, more of just like, that's the past now and it needs to stay in the past. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to dwell in it because that's not healthy. You know? Um, so I would give you that little, that little nugget of advice. Um, and the last thing that I want to say on this tangent is that maybe you are in... A relationship right now whether it's romantic whether it's friendship whether it's a situationship we've all been there um a friends with benefits situation whatever it is maybe you're in that place where you know it's not good for you but you don't want to let go because you're afraid of being lonely you're afraid of starting over and let me tell you that fear is real i have experienced it I think that's one of the big reasons that even though I knew my relationship at the end was not healthy, I didn't want to let go because I was like, oh, like I'm 26, like, like 26 is old. Now I know that it's not, but I was like, I'm 26. Like I want to get engaged. I don't want to have to start over, blah, 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 blah. And that's, I think, part of the reason why I stayed. And I was like talking to, again, I don't like to go into like personal things about like my friends on here, but this is just such a perfect example, perfect example of, you know, my, my friend in a relationship that, you know, things were a little rocky. She wasn't sure how she was feeling and she started crying and she said, am I really going to have to start over? And that was her main concern. That was her main worry. And I was like, oh, my love, like. That is, I, I get it. That feeling is so real and I'm validating your feelings because it, it that is a real fear to have. But that is not a reason to stay in a relationship that is not good for you because you're afraid of starting over, because you're afraid of being lonely. I have seen, I am living proof that one, there is always better you think oh I'm never gonna find somebody again even if the relationship you're coming out of isn't a good one your first instinct is to be like oh I'm never gonna find anything else why there are so many people in the world even though it seems like the good ones are kind of hiding a little bit right now or are already married anyway um you know it's a very that's a very real fear to have but I promise you that there is better for you on the other side. You're going to have to go through it. Let yourself feel the loneliness. I know so many people in my life that try to fill that void. I know people that jump from relationship to relationship so fast. I'm like, how are you? I've been single for 10 months. How are you finding people in a matter of weeks that you're all of a sudden on date number three? I'm like, where are you getting these people from? But it's because some people really don't know how to be alone and they're looking to fill that void that they have in them with somebody else. And then when that doesn't work out, we take the next one that comes. And I get it. It's so tempting. I think that's why I was going on all those dates is because I wanted, I wanted someone because I felt like it would complete me it doesn't it doesn't I promise you you have to be a whole person first before you invite somebody in yeah it's just it's the healthiest way to do it in my in my personal opinion so don't fight don't fight for a relationship just because you're afraid of being alone fight for a relationship because you really love that person Fight for that relationship because they treat you the way you deserve. Fight for that relationship because you truly believe that it is the best for you and you know deep in your heart that it is the best for you. Don't fight and hold on to something that is not choosing you. Don't hold on to something because you are afraid of what's going to come next because I promise you, it'll always be better. Always. 
I learned how to choose myself. I learned how to pour into myself. I learned how to comfort myself. I learned how to do just really sustain my happiness myself. I learned how to do it all myself. And man, it feels good. It feels so good. It's so empowering. It's just, oh, mm. and that's the end of my notes. So I hope I encouraged you today. I was more of just like showing or sharing my experience with you rather than giving you steps of like, I didn't want to come on here and be like, you have to do this and then you have to do this and then you have to do this. Like I wanted to just talk to you like I was talking to a friend about the things that I learned and the things that I've taken away from my almost a year of being single. And I just wish that people didn't make it into something so bad. Singleness is really, it's a good thing. And I keep going back to singleness because for me, that's what's appropriate. And that's what led me into my season of feeling lonely. But I I hope and I pray that whatever your situation is, that you get to a point where you can differentiate between being alone and being lonely. And I hope that you find all the comfort that you need whether you're living alone or you're just feeling, you can, you can live in a house full of people and still feel alone. Um, and that's what I'm saying. It's a feeling and it's a feeling that needs to be worked on, but you can do it because I am living proof that it can be done and that it's always better on the other side. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I think that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I look forward to reading your comments. Again, if there's anything specific that you'd like me to talk about in an upcoming episode, please go ahead and leave it down below. And thank you guys so much for watching and for being here for another episode of the Walk Pack podcast. Until next time, I love you guys. Bye-bye.